Okay. Here we have our centerpiece of our aluminum weld kit, uh, a 110 volt aluminum discharge welder, capacitor discharge welder. The on off switch is in the back of the machine. Once you turn it on, it'll take a couple seconds for it to charge up. I recommend starting at about 85 volts. You can change that with these buttons. Then you can go up depending on what you're working on to like 90, 95, 100. Once you go over 100 volts, there's a possibility of pulling a hole into the metal due to the fact that there's some of the base metal, the sheet metal that you're working with or aluminum, it thins out so you're pulling on a pretty thin piece of material. We have prepped a little hood here. Uh, we have two dents, one round one, one elongated one that we're going to pull out. I cleaned it up already a little bit. What you want to do is you want to use the supplied brushes. You have a uh, horseshoe brush and a little toothbrush brush, uh, stainless steel. You really want to clean the metal. At first it'll kind of feel like uh, ball bearings and then you can really feel how it actually grips into the metal. So you want to just go back and forth, clean it up. You want to use the uh, small brush to really get into it in the spot that you're welding on. As you can see, the material that it actually took off here on the side that would be aluminum oxide and pieces of aluminum itself. So you really want to get into it and clean it up really well. This is the uh, weld gun. It incorporates two grounds right next to the your welding electrode. When you're attaching a nail, grab the nail by its side. Do not touch the tip. The reason for that is there's always oily residue on your fingertips that'll transfer onto the tip and then contaminate the weld. Use anything that doesn't have any oil on it. In this instance I'm just using a, a paper towel but you can use the side of a shirt, a little wooden block or anything else that is not too hard when you're pushing it in. Every electrode can individually move. So when you're welding, I'm going to clean this one here right now. When you're welding, what you want to make sure of is that you're perpendicular to the surface that you're welding onto, which means that I'm going to go and put a nail right in the middle. I want to pull straight up, so I'm going to be I want to be as straight as possible, but because all of them are individually movable, you can actually go in, a, in an angle. That comes into play when you have a larger dent and you want to put a nail in a circle and then pull from the outside in, in a circular motion. But in this case, we're going straight in. First the outside electrodes touch. You push down. Now the center electrode touches you want to push a little bit more like this and then pull the trigger. Once the nail is attached you can use any of the pulling devices that we have. Attach a small uh, pulling adapter. You just push down the, the little lever, put it onto the nail. You can use a T-handle puller to pull up, a lever puller that comes in handy if you just want to find a good spot where you have good support. To take this off you just push the lever down and lift it up. This is a what we call a squeeze puller. Again push the lever down put it over the nail. What we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to use this puller 
we're going to apply some heat with the heat gun that is supplied in the kit. You can adjust it to any temperature needed. We want to relax the molecules in the aluminum. We don't want to anneal the aluminum. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the gun at about 450 degrees, 550 degrees. You're not supposed to heat it up higher than about 400, which will, will take some time. But setting it at 450 to 550, we're going to take the guesswork out of the heating. If you use a torch to heat up your panel, we recommend using crayons that will tell you the temperature of the base metal, or you can use the infrared thermometer to check the temperature of the metal. So the heat gun, we're going to go to 450-550 degrees. We're going to heat up the dent while we're pulling. You don't want to you don't want to just grab the handle and just close your hand. What you want to do is, you can actually almost do it with two fingers. You just want to easily squeeze on the, on the levers. And that will put a lot of force on the nail, um, just because the way the tool is built. So you just want to squeeze it. It's kind of like working uh, paintless dent repair. You can rotate the handle around or rotate the pulling tool around to get a little bit different pull angles on it. And I just felt the handle actually move, so it quite pulled quite up, uh, pulled up quite a bit. Okay. You can see when I open it up, this is how much it actually moved. I'm now I'm going to push this down, get a plier of some sort and clip the nail off. There you go. Now this nail came off fairly easy, but it was still able to pull that amount of dent out. So it does not really take that much as long as you don't force it out. So right now we're going to take our body file. You can see the dent came out to the point where you just have to use a heavy primer and fill up this area right here and the dent is gone. <clears throat> came out very nice. Now on this dent here, what we have, we have an elongated dent, which you have to use multiple nails. It'll not come out in one pull just because it's a long dent. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, clean it up one more time, just because the aluminum might oxidize in a matter of uh, 15 minutes. So you want to make sure that, it, that it's really nice and clean right before you weld. Um, and then we're going to attach multiple nails and pull at the same time. Again, attach the nail, not touching the tip, very important. Okay, now that I attached two nails, what we're going to do is we're going to attach our sliders. In the kit, we have one of the squeeze pullers. It has a single pull attachment. You can, by unscrewing the top, 
change it to a multipole setup, which just has a hole. And what you do is just rotate it onto this angle, slide it between your nails, use the su supplied rod, and just slide it through. Then you want to push it down. Now you can pull both of them at the same time. Again, we're going to apply some heat. Again, a very slight pull. Now the nails release prematurely, <clears throat> which is no big deal, because you can just reattach an another one. But the dent is almost out at the same time. It'll pull up this area here and this, and we'll probably still have a low spot in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean it up and put one more nail in the middle and do a single pull. Off the nail. And use the body file to knock off whatever is on there right now, the rest of the nail. As you can see, again, just a tiny little low spot right here that can easily be filled with primer. Perfect.